On August 24th, Rolex acquired Carl F. Bucherer, one of the world's largest watch retailers. Everyone in the watch space seems to be surprised by this news, claiming that no one could have seen this coming. But let's be real, it is impossible to predict the strategic marketing moves of one of the biggest watch brands in the world. After all, the Rolex Mystique is part of the reason the brand's such a powerhouse in the market. Rolex doesn't let you peek behind the curtain before it's time for the show, so I wouldn't be surprised if they've been aiming to acquire Booker for a while now. Anyway, if you clicked on this video, then you're probably wondering, what was Rolex's motivation behind this acquisition? What does this mean for the Rolex market? And most importantly, what does this mean for you as a consumer? The short answer? Don't know. Like many of the people reporting on this, I'm just speculating and offering my opinion. But that's half the fun. And while I'm giving you my personal opinion on the latest Rolex news, to you, my viewer, I offer you my comment section as a platform where you can voice your hot take and opinion. Anyway, let's jump in. So here's a quick synopsis for those of you who are unaware. Rolex and Bucherer have been in a relationship for over a hundred years. Bucherer is also the largest authorized Rolex dealer in the world. And Bucherer, the watch manufacturer, has been trying to gain its share of the watch market as well. It wasn't too long ago that they acquired Tourneau. I remember when they remodeled the Tourneau store at the King of Prussia Mall near where I live. They ended up expanding the store and dropping some of the less expensive brands like Nomos, for example. Though I think it's still available online, but you can't find them in the stores anymore. Then they ended up putting their more expensive brands up front and center. So why would Rolex buy Bucherer? My best guess is the biggest reason that Rolex did this is because now not only will they have boutiques slash outlets where they have a direct pipeline to new Rolexes, but now any money made off of these certified pre-owned Rolexes at these locations goes directly into the deep pockets of Rolex. Just think about it. Even though the market's taken a bit of a downturn, there's plenty of Rolex models that sell pre-owned for much more than they do new. At one point, Rolex wasn't getting any of that money. Then they introduced the certified Rolex pre-owned program, and now they own quite a few of those stores where those pre-owned Rolexes will be sold. They get all of that money now. Here's a pop quiz. Do you think this is gonna make those models more affordable or even less? I don't know for sure, but I'm not optimistic. This looks like Rolex is trying to corner the market for pre-owned Rolexes. The best way for a retailer to acquire pre-owned Rolexes is to let people trade them in for new ones. My guess is Rolex will be hip deep in the pre-owned Rolex market, and who knows how much control they'll be able to exert with the position they've just acquired. Anyway, we all know that Rolex is the parent company to Tudor, and I think it's gonna be interesting to see how this whole thing with Booker plays out. In their official statement, they mentioned that they have a bunch of stores worldwide, over a hundred actually. And out of those, 53 sell Rolexes and 48 sell Tudor watches. They didn't mention that some stores have both, but the King of Prussia location does have both, and I doubt they're the only one. With that much influence, I wonder if Rolex will even need to maintain its relationships with other ADs like Watches of Switzerland in the long run. For a lot of these boutiques, it's Rolex that keeps the lights on. Boutiques need that Rolex back wall in their stores, and Rolex used to need boutiques to sell their watches, but maybe not for long. Another question is, how is this gonna play out for those other brands that are featured and sold at Booker locations? Will they be regulated to the back wall? Will those companies be willing to have so many of their watches sold through a Rolex-owned retail company? It just happened yesterday, and to be totally honest, I'm left with a lot more questions than answers. But at first blush, this looks like a pretty shrewd and profitable move by Rolex. Hello everyone, I have returned to the tubes. You're probably noticing that my studio looks drastically different. And if you followed me on Instagram, you would have seen that entire process. If you didn't, then clearly you're doing something wrong. Anyway, it's all in preparation for this baby right here, which I will be talking about shortly, but I wanted to just drop in, give you some quick little Rolex news, get the ball rolling. And hey, if you're still watching at this point, 
then that means you must like my content and you should probably hit that subscribe button so you know when I post new videos.